Two fairly important 40k updates have dropped today. The Tyranid Crusher Stampede and Leviathan Supplement both feature on a list of banned rules, and there's a few small but important changes to the balanced data slate. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where Games Workshop are being fairly busy on the digital front today. They've issued an entire list of rules where they tell you which supplements are legal and which ones aren't anymore, and then they've basically changed a few sections on the balanced data slate, adding in some important stuff for the Imperial Knights and some bad news for the Imperial Guard. We'll go through the list of banned and legal rules first, and then move on to the data slate stuff. So first up, they've issued a document saying which rules are approved for match play and which ones aren't recommended for current game use anymore. They posted it on the 40k Facebook page a few hours ago, though maybe it's a bit weird that they didn't put it on Warhammer Community as well. This one doesn't talk through codexes or anything, which is fairly obvious which are the current ones, but basically it goes through all the other official supplemental content, things like Psychic Awakening supplements, Warzone expansion books and White Dwarf supplements, and saying which ones are the current rules and which ones aren't. This one's somewhat of a new move for them, they haven't often had a document like this before, but with the sheer amount of random extra supplements and rules they've released in different places, I think that it's a list that's somewhat helpful, particularly for newer players if they can find it. The majority of the things are fairly expected stuff, but the big news is that both Crusher Stampede and the Codex Leviathan supplement, both of those are not recommended for match play, basically being an effective nerf to Tyranids, as like it or not, these were both basically match play legal up to now. There's a fair few interesting details though, so let's take a look through the list and then talk about those Tyranid things in specific. So generally I think it's usually fairly obvious which rules are meant to be current and which ones aren't. Usually when a codex drops, it typically replaces most of the rules that came before them, and it's particularly clear if the codex has an updated section of the same sort of rules titled in the same way, Say when the Orc Codex came out, they had a new table of custom jobs, which seemed fairly clear that it was supposed to replace the old version that you paid for in command points. In general, Games Workshop haven't tended to explicitly state this though, just sort of take it as read. Most of the sections like that tend to be fairly self-explanatory, but a few of the others are maybe a bit more ambiguous. Basically, they've gone through their Psychic Awakening book series at the end of 8th edition, the Warzone books from 9th edition, and the White Dwarf sections, and giving them a tick if they're still match play legal, and a cross if they aren't. One of the most interesting things is that they have expiry dates written on really quite a lot of the things that are legal. Say for example, on Psychic Awakening Engine War, it says valid until January 2023, unless superseded by a codex. Engine War, for example, contains Chaos Demons, Chaos Knights, and Imperial Knight rules. The Knight rules are likely to be superseded straight away. And to be honest, I would be very surprised if the demons don't receive their codex by that time as well. The same dates on quite a few other things, such as the Astra Militarum, but interestingly enough there's a June 2023 date on the Agents of the Imperium section as per War of the Spider. I guess Imperial Assassins and things don't often need their rules updated all that regularly. It's kind of interesting why they've chosen January and June to be two important dates. I guess the January date will be a year from the last chapter approved, so I guess in theory it could be a balanced time where they decide to retake stock of everything, decide what's legal, and decide if these supplements are still going to be useful. And the June date is perhaps even more interesting. Games Workshop do seem to farm out the editions fairly quickly these days. It's usually around about a 3 or 4 year release cycle for editions of 40k, and it's certainly very possible that 10th edition could be happening in 2023. I guess only time will tell on that front. But it is kind of a bit weird seeing expiry dates being written in rules for things. I guess it's good that they're not even pretending that the rules will last a particularly long amount of time, but it's kind of surprising seeing Games Workshop actually acknowledge that in print here. I suppose theoretically they could just issue another update like this saying yes these rules remain match play legal, but my guess is that most of these would have been superseded by codexes by them anyway. In any case, out of the Psychic Awakening series, this really is a fairly expected list. Pretty much everything here was kind of taken over by the new codexes that came out to replace them, I think one of the only exceptions was the Space Marine chapter specific litanies. They came out in that Faith and Fury book. I think Games Workshop did say that they weren't recommended going forward when the new codex is dropped, but they're absolutely 100% confirmed to be dead now. Otherwise, the Imperial Guard keep their tank aces. I'm sure that'll be a reimagined when their book does drop. The Chaos Demons keep their exalted greater demons. The Knights are soon to be replaced in a new codex and the Heretic Astartes Legions and Creations of Bile are both rumoured to be in the upcoming Chaos Space Marine Codex. Moving on from 8th edition into 9th, 
These are the Warzone rules and the White Dwarf rules. The White Dwarf ones, I think, span the two editions, but certainly seeing as all the Warzone things were written in 9th edition, you would kind of expect most of it to still be legal. I think that's one of the reasons why the Tyranid changes are a little bit surprising, even if kind of suspected from a balanced perspective. Again, most of these have expiry dates, January 2023 for Charidon and Octarius, and June 2023 for the Warzone Nachman stuff, though I must admit the Nachman stuff was kind of niche, the Space Marine Phobos Army of Renown, and that Bloody Rose supplement for the Sisters of Battle. For the White Dwarf rules, they have a fair few of the Index Astartes, the chapter-specific rules for Emperor's Spears, Exorcists, and Tome Keepers, they're all fairly niche ones, though it looks like they forgot the Index Astartes for the Wolf Spear chapter, the Space Wolf Successors, and they haven't bothered to list the Index Hereticus one for Fallen either, though admittedly those were probably best forgotten, really lacklustre rules for the Fallen that didn't change anything, meaning that they were still super underwhelming. The things that really stand out here are the Tyranid ones though, in particular the Codex Supplement Leviathan, that does stand out as the only one that's banned out of the Warzone series out of all of the chapter supplements, when basically everything else that came out does remain. Focusing on Tyranids in particular then, Losing both the Crusher Stampede options and the Leviathan supplement will definitely lead to a nerf for the faction, though to be honest I really don't think it's the worst thing in the world, the new Tyranids are looking really strong indeed, I think they'll do absolutely fine without these. In a nutshell, I feel like the Crusher Stampede monster war rules were trying to make the best out of some really bad data sheets, and they're just not needed buffs with the new codex that's actually made them quite good, and the Leviathan supplement was kind of a get you through type thing to get you to the codex, and now there's a fair few weird rule overlaps between the Leviathan Supplement and Codex Tyranids. Focusing on the Crusher Stampede first, that was a White Dwarf Army of Renown that came out in December. Basically a monster style list, don't take any gene stealers or termagants, and all your monsters get massively better. Gaining minus 1 damage, a 5 plus imbal, and counting as more models on objectives. I thought it did quite a good job of taking a fairly underwhelming 8th edition Codex, making it really really strong. Definitely quite good as supplemental rules go making a pretty bad army meaningful again. The massive buffs that it gave were kind of needed for the old codex, but in the new one the monster stat lines are really beefy. For 170 points or so, you can get a 15 wound toughness 8 2 plus save monster with some decent damage output, getting minus 1 damage, a 5 plus invul and the objective boosts all for free just don't really seem things that are needed quite as much. Overall, I'm really not surprised that they chose to get rid of this. If they hadn't chosen to, I think we would have seen Tyranids winning as hard or harder than Harlequins were, and I think in general it's probably best that they did this sooner rather than later. Out of the two, I was maybe a little bit more surprised by the Leviathan supplement change. As I said, I'm not enormously surprised, seeing as it did have a fair few overlapping rules, but it maybe didn't seem quite as necessary to nerf this one as the Crusher maybe. This was a supplement from Warzone Octarius for High Fleet Leviathan, and it came out around October time, providing a whole load of powerful warlord traits, stratagems, and boosts to the faction, easy way for Tyranids to get some redeployment, a whole load of rerolls, pop-up objectives secured, and a few other bits. It did have the slightly unhelpful side effect of making a Leviathan High Fleet list far better than most of the others, so it did mean that if you were building a Tyranids list, in general everything besides Leviathan was just a little bit niche. I must admit for anyone who bought it, I think it would be quite a good feel at the time, seeing as you were massively amping up a weak codex, but in hindsight the timeframes of things still really don't look too great. As it came out in October, to have it basically banned out riots just over 6 months later really isn't so great. GW supplement books do have a reputation for having a fairly short shelf life, but even by their standards this is kind of bad. Overall I think there are positives and negatives to them banning these supplements. It is definitely good for game balance overall. The new Tyranids are a pretty strong book and aren't going to need these massive extra large power boosts and it does make the other higher fleets a lot more enticing. If you had both of these rule sets active, then you'd just mainly see Crusher and Leviathan lists, with only a few other niche things. I feel that being fairly on it isn't the worst thing either. They've managed to get out this update just a few days after the supplements dropped, and if they are going to invalidate rules or make big changes like this, it's better to do it as soon as the codex drops rather than later. And I think that the existence of the rules was quite good in its own time, giving Tyranids a big power boost to an older codex for the first six months, and unlike the vast majority of 8th edition armies, actually allowed them to compete somewhat during 9th edition before their codex. On the other hand, it isn't so great to invalidate rules around 6 months after buying. It'll leave a bit of a sour taste in the mouth for Tyranid players who've had their book become waste paper overnight. I'd say that's the biggest loss, I could find a few other nitpicks. 
They probably could have put this in the balanced data slate to start with, just to have all the rules come out at the same time. I just feel it's a little bit inconsistent to ban these and not other codex supplements that have come out in the Warzone books. For example, the Admic Metallica supplement came out a bit before the codex, and that still stands legally. The inconsistency is maybe a little bit annoying, though obviously I feel that these ones are a lot more likely to cause issue, and the Admec Metallica one certainly isn't going to cause any sort of outrage from power level. Otherwise, it maybe just feels a little bit lazy to just outright ban them, and not say tweak the rules in some way so they can be acceptable with the new codex. I feel that that would kind of meant just rewriting the entire rules in digital format, but I guess if they had just banned, say, a selection of the stratagems from Leviathan, or say toned down the Crusher Stampede to, say, for example, remove the minus one damage mechanic and a stratagem or two that overlapped, then perhaps they could have still had them as alternate options for building Tyranids. They both had benefits and trade offs. Still, though, as a channel primarily focused on the game, I think it's generally a positive move. Nice to see that the next month or so of tournaments isn't just going to be pure Tyranid Crusher Stampede, crushing everything. Finally, onto our second major change, which is the three updates to the balanced data slate. The one that they just issued did throw up a few questions. First of all, what has happened to the Imperial and Chaos Knight objective rules? As the new data slate invalidates the old one, it basically meant that the Imperial Knights just suddenly lost their obsec armagers and counting as more models rule. I was kind of wondering whether they just deliberately left it out because they're getting their codexes soon, but it doesn't seem that it was indeed an error, and they've put that rule back in just as it was, basically to allow knights to still have their objective rules for the next few weeks until their codex drops. Maybe not the single biggest deal in the world, but I think it is quite a nice touch, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to make knight armies basically unplayable competitively until their book actually comes out. I'd be amazed if they didn't get a very similar rule when their codex is out, so it seems very strange to take it away just for a very short amount of time beforehand. Next up, and maybe not the best news for the Imperial Guard, is that they have clarified the situation with Militarum Tempestus and the Hammer of the Emperor rule. I talked about this in the Guard video the other week, but basically it was just plain unclear whether or not Militarum Tempestus could get access to the rules. From my reading rules as written, because the Militarum Tempestus keyword replaced the regiment keyword, it sounded like guard armies with no Tempestus Scions in could get the Hammer of the Emperor rule, and ones with only Tempestus Scions could get it, but if you actually took a reasonable and fluffy mix of guard and Scions, then none of your models will get the rule at all. The way they've chosen to change it is that Militarum Tempestus just don't count as having it in the first place. It means that if you have a mixed attachment of guard and Scions, then the Scions don't stop you from getting the Hammer of the Emperor, but they won't get it themselves. But I guess it is technically a massive nerf to standalone Scion armies. They went from everyone having it to no one having it at all. It's a truly massive nerf for people who wanted to play standalone Scions. The Hammer of the Emperor rule was really, really good with their hotshot las guns. Pretty much the epitome in high rate of fire, low strength, and decent AP. I think it was certainly one of the most powerful ways to get the most out of that rule. But I don't think it would have been overpowered in a pure Scion list still. I think it might have had them being at least somewhat competitive with some of the other stronger armies out there, but considering the amount of crazy power out there in 9th edition, I still don't think it would have been too much given the Scion's limited unit pool. I think if I had made changes to it, I might have said that any pure Tempestus Scion detachment could also get that maybe. So maybe if you're just using a few random scattered Scion squads attached to a guard regiment, they wouldn't get it, but if you are committing to full detachments, then perhaps they could just the same. In any case, for whatever reason Games Workshop have chosen not to, basically strong guard armies are going to take very few scions now, I strongly suspect just a few small action and utility units for doing objectives and things. It's a big nerf to running very heavy scion lists, rather than more mixed guard. Finally, there was a minor change to the Tyranid Hive Tyrants. They slightly tweaked the keywords, meaning that you can get the bodyguard ability for winged Hive Tyrants and the Swarm Lord. I think technically it was locked to the standard Hive Tyrant datasheet before. In general, I think that's some still quite helpful corrections though. The Hammer of the Emperor thing definitely needed clarifying one way or the other, as it was just plain ambiguous. Nice for the Knights to get their obsec back, but there are still perhaps a few oddities out there. For example, I believe that Cypher and the Fallen still don't get Armour of Contempt. I've seen a few other people questioning whether certain units get it, like I believe Ultramarine's Victrix Guard. In general though, for the general health of 40k, I think that both the removal of Crusher Stampede and the balanced data slate tweaks have broadly been quite helpful. I'm now genuinely quite a lot more interested to see just how well Tyranids will do against the competition. Can they still be one of the dominant armies out there, even if they don't have their insane, unneeded extra layer of special rules? 
As always, let me know what you think of the changes down in the comments below. I look forward to any thoughts or speculation as always, perhaps particularly regarding that mystery about those update dates, what happens in January and June 2023. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k stuff coming. I do tend to have new 40k stuff dropping just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the content on the channel, I would just like to mention the Allspets Tactics Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Making all these YouTubes does take a fair amount of time and effort, and if you are enjoying regularly, then any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.